Case 70, Stanford versus Kuwait Airways. Warning, you might find some of this content disturbing. We find ourselves in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Facts. In the fall of 1983, the Dawa, a group of Shiite extremists, was imprisoned in Kuwait for deadly attacks on the U.S. and French embassies in Beirut. A year later, the Shiite Muslim group Hezbollah, an Islamic terror organization based in Beirut, increased its violent opposition in the incarceration of the Dawa prisoners. With the first suicide car bombing of the American embassy in Beirut in 1983, Hezbollah embarked on large-scale terrorist activities kidnapping American journalists, diplomats, and academics, and murdering scores of people in suicide car bombings. This Shiite Muslim terror group threatened continued attacks on Kuwaiti, French, and American citizens unless the Dawa prisoners were released. Four terrorists boarded Middle Eastern Airlines MEA Flight 426 in Beirut, Lebanon. The flight ended in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where the four terrorists disembarked and connected with Kuwait Airways Flight KU-221, bound for Karachi, Pakistan. Three American diplomats, William Stanford, Charles Hednia, and Charles Kapar, were also on board KU-221. Shortly after takeoff from Dubai, the terrorists hijacked KU-221, forcing the pilot to turn north. The plane landed in Tehran, Iran, and sat on the airport tarmac for days while the terrorists tortured the three American diplomats, finally murdering Hegna and Stanford. Plaintiffs Charles Kapar and the estates of the two deceased diplomats brought the suit, alleging that MEA's negligence was the proximate cause of the injuries and deaths occurring on board KU-221. After a jury trial in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, the jury deadlocked and the court declared a mistrial. MEA then filed a motion for judgment as a matter of law, arguing that MEA owed no duty to the three diplomats and that MEA's actions in Beirut were not a proximate cause of the injuries and death aboard KU-221 in Tehran. The court granted MEA's motion. Plaintiffs appeal, arguing that MEA owed them a duty to use due care to avoid the known risk of hijacking. MEA breached that duty by failing to screen passengers adequately in Beirut, and this breach was a proximate cause of their injuries. The issue Whether MEA owed them a duty to use due care to avoid the known risk of hijacking, and whether MEA breached that duty by failing to screen passengers adequately in Beirut, and this breach was the proximate cause of their injuries. Holding, the court reversed and remanded for a new trial. Reasoning MEA, Kuwait Airways, and other members of IATA participated in a program of inner line ticketing. Inner line ticketing refers to a reciprocal arrangement whereby a single ticket written by one airline for a flight on that airline will also accommodate the same passenger's flight on a second airline, with the revenues to be allocated pro tanto to that extent between the airlines. Passengers need only one ticket and one baggage check to travel on both airlines. I also discussed new techniques terror groups were using to circumvent airport security measures to infiltrate an airport or airline. The meeting discussed one method for terrorists to capitalize on the lax security at a dirty airport and board a plane bound for a more secure airport. Upon arrival at the more secure airport, the terrorists would transfer to a target airline and then hijack the target plane. The would-be terrorist may well have traveled on the original carrier without any intention of committing a terrorist act against that carrier, but with the object of a transfer to another target carrier. IATA cautioned its members that the only solution to this situation is to create circumstances where some degree of reliance can be placed on the security measures of other states. An MEA official admitted that he knew in December 1984 that the security measures at Beirut Airport were minimal, 
Specifically, MEA knew that X-ray machines for checking passengers' luggage were not operating and that metal detectors were apparently functioning but locked and not in use. In addition, MEA was aware, or in the exercise of reasonable prudence should have been aware, that many airlines had ceased all operations out of Beirut because of the threats of violence coming from Islamic militants in Beirut. MEA maintained, however, that it was helpless to offer additional security measures because airport security was under the sole control of the Lebanese army. An MEA official testified that the military conducted searches of passengers and luggage by hand, but did not employ any more sophisticated forms of security screening. He also testified that MEA never asked the Lebanese military to strengthen the security measures at the Beirut airport. MEA's employees at the Beirut airport were responsible for selling and examining passengers' tickets, checking the information on the tickets against visas and passports, and receiving baggage from the passengers. These employees were the first line of defense between hijackers who slipped through the ludicrous security at Beirut Airport and innocent passengers aboard MEA and connecting flights. Nevertheless, they did not perform any other searches known as secondary screening of passengers or their bags. Also in place was a communications network within MEA, allowing MEA employees to relay information between its stations in Beirut and Dubai. There is no evidence, however, that MEA ever used this information network to contact its agents in Dubai to have them relay information to other IALTA members about suspicious passengers, and its employees certainly did not do so in this case. The District Court held that plaintiffs failed to prove that MEA's inaction was a proximate cause of the deaths of Hegna and Stanford and the injuries sustained by Kapar. The court reasoned that Number one, there was no evidence of what the Lebanese military could have done if MEA had alerted them to the four suspicious men. Two, the evidence showed only that the weaponry emerged on board the Kuwait Airways plane, leaving open the possibility that the hijackers procured their weapons in Dubai. And three, even if a causal link were established, the negligence of the Kuwait Airways employees and the Dubai airport security officials were intervening acts breaking the chain of causation between MEA and the resultant harm. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals disagreed with this analysis. Plaintiffs made at least a prima facie showing of causation, and this record does not present such an overwhelming amount of evidence that fair-minded jurors could not arrive at a verdict against MEA. Considering the evidence in light of the most favorable to plaintiffs, and resolving all inferences that a jury might draw in their favor, it cannot be said that no rational juror could find in plaintiff's favor.